Uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a result of quarantine. Maybe it's the nostalgia. But I recently took a nosedive back into physical card games with my friend East with the Digimon TCG that came out. And it's been a lot of fun. It's been really refreshing, actually. Uh, I hadn't played a physical card game for a long time. And as someone who has dabbled with a variety of physical and digital card games in the past, it made me think about why I was enjoying this versus the, the previous outs that I've had with, with some of the digital card games uh, in recent memory. So it got me thinking a lot about like the differences between the two, right? So presentation is, of course, an obvious difference here. Uh, while both offer a variety of artwork, digital card games do so much for presentation. I think animations, sound effects, audio clips, they do something to help bring those cards to life. Uh, that said, I am a bit biased. I think there is something particularly satisfying about holding a physical card. It's just a different kind of feeling about it. It's, it's difficult to articulate other than saying it feels like it's mine. Uh, I find this to be more satisfying from a collector's perspective too, given you have something that you can put on display or put in a, on, a, on a shelf or put in a binder. Of course, this is a double-edged sword. You know, in, in the case that there are rule changes or mechanics added over time, or the need for clarifications on certain wordings, they can't really patch out an old card, you know? Well, or they can, but it gets kind of messy, as you can see. They have to reprint them with the changes made. This is something that digital card games can do just by rolling out a simple patch. But can you imagine showing up to play with one of your old Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh decks only to find out that the effects don't really apply the same way that you thought anymore? Furthermore, through digital games, cards can have more potential effects that can activate that would otherwise be too bothersome or even impossible to execute in real life. Of course, there is an associated cost that we pay for holding physical product, right? This is reflected in packs, their pricing, and the barrier of entry that comes with these games as a result. This is an edge that digital card games have. They are usually cheaper to invest in and create a collection with. Although they often lack a secondary market where players can buy or sell and trade singles, there are also generally systems in the game that allow you to break down cards that you don't want or that you don't use and you can create desired cards with them. Digital card games are also more generous with handouts and cards generally. As well as being free to play, and it works out in a way to where the barrier of entry is much lower and cheaper and gentler. There's lots of people that play these games and never spend a cent. Matchmaking is a big plus to digital games and their accessibility, I think. The fact that you can have all your cards on your phone and there are menus and modes that allow for quick card sorting and deck maintenance, and the fact that you can just get into a match with anybody from anywhere very quickly with very little time commitment, it dwarfs the investment that you have to put in to get matches with physical card games. You not only have to acquire product, but you have to make the trip out to a, to a physical location where you're going to seek people who are also willing to make that same investment just to be able to even play. Because of cost, travel requirements, stuff like that, you're going to be working with a smaller pool of potential players. And not all of those players might make the investment to run the most expensive decks or top decks in that meta or, or whatever. Counterplay and strategy are, always, are, are developed based on your opponents. So thanks to matchmaking through netplay, Digital card games are going to give you a broader and more general pool of players to play against. You know, something else that comes up with this discussion is how you play the game. Digital card games are generally really strong at teaching players the rules through interactions and interactive tutorials. And because things like rulings and judge calls aren't a thing, there's never really a need to have a conversation or call for a judge because the game just doesn't allow you to do moves that you can't make. If it isn't possible, the card won't be glowing, you know, or the effect won't go off that way. You simply won't be able to do it. One negative to this, though, is that you're ultimately limited in how you play the game by what the developers dictate. You know, let's say you and your friend want to play a game type with some special rules or something. You're at the mercy of the devs to make that a mode in the game. Whereas with physical, you can always just, you know, say, okay, let's just play this way. I think the biggest diverging point between digital and physical card games is the social aspect, of course. You know, one big up that digital games have is how well they have been integrated and grown alongside other digital platforms. Through services like Discord, streaming platforms, these games really lend themselves towards community growth and engagement with wide audiences. However, I think the ultimate weakness for digital, for all its merits, is how impersonal playing them, both casually and competitively, can feel compared to their physical card game counterparts. This is less true recently due to how strong Discord and streams have become for kind of like community building, but there's still a, a gulf here. And it goes beyond the capacity to just, you know, it, it goes beyond your capacity for building stronger relationships in, with people in person. I remember a few years ago when I was doing Shadowverse commentary, 
for one of the few annual in-person events that they had when the game was pushing competition at DreamHacks. I remember being at these events and feeling like something was missing from, from the stage play. Two players go to a playing table, they shake hands, smile, they tell the judges their bands, they sit down, and then their heads go down to look at the screen and they never interact with the other person again until the match is over. Verbal and nonverbal cues and communication add so much to how the game plays and how it feels. Being able to observe an opponent's posture, facial expressions, voice intonation, hand gestures, etc. Those all offer an additional layer of depth to how the game is played. You can't see your opponent checking their trash or graveyard with a digital game to know that they're, you know, saving up for some kind of, uh, you know, res or, or spell card or something like that, right? It's not to say that digital card games don't have their own kind of ways of doing this. You know, after all, they say, what, creativity is bred through limitation, right? Bluffing and talking shit in digital card games can be done in their own ways through, like, taunts, misplays, avatar actions, chat spamming, emoting, roping, that kind of stuff. But similar to poker versus online poker, the emphasis becomes purely on gameplay and card interactions versus person-to-person -person interactions. So you end up playing the game versus playing an opponent. But here's the thing, with the removal of that personal element, you will never get the battling boxers guy in a digital card game. He does not exist, it can't happen. Uh, 38. 38? Yeah. You played two? Thank you. God! <laughs> <laughs> You know, maybe it's because I come from a fighting game background and there are a lot of parallels with this discussion and how we talk about net play versus offline play. So this point kind of hits home for me. But when I play digital card games, it feels like I'm just grinding and playing against an infinite mob of nameless, faceless opponents. There's no discussion, limited interactions, person to person stuff. Without the nuances of those personal interactions, all you have left to focus on is the gameplay. For that reason, in the end, I think I really, for me, I really have to like the game and the gameplay for a digital card game to have long-term appeal for me. The game has to feel really compelling, rewarding, and satisfying to play in order to compensate how impersonal competition in the game can feel. You know, when it comes to the Digimon TCG, I think this game and how it wrote me in has a lot to do with the isolated nature of life in Corona era, and nostalgia for sure is a big factor. You know, the, art, the artwork for this card game is fantastic, and the memory system is a really cool mechanic that relies heavily on reads, risk assessment, and situational awareness. But then also, just because we're playing in person too, you know, that those personal interactions definitely come into play with that as well. Man, it seems like since we started playing, the process of deck building and tuning over the course of a week, acquiring new cards, coming up with strategies to win over that the course of that week leading up to every Friday session has been, you know, pretty, really fun for me. Having that kind of distraction and social release has been very welcome in this era. Anyway, our matches the other day, we kind of came to the question of why we vibe with this game so hard, and it got me thinking about card games in general, and I kind of ended up with this video in the end. That said, I want to hear what you guys think. Am I some kind of deranged boomer uh, trying to bait digital card game players, or am I on to something here? What card game has hit for you the hardest in the past, and was it physical or digital? I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys later.